It's Tuesday. It's 8 p.m. It's the Tony and Una show. And it's all about the music, although we might be slipping a little bit of humour and a few other things as well. We'll try. Now, this is the first show, and we have said that it's all about the music. So we're going to crack on now with our first original full band sound song called Fallen Stars. And this is dedicated to all those people who played music over the years and who sadly passed away. I'm sure you can play a game of guessing who some of these people are. There may be a few people you don't know, but uh, before the rain really starts coming down, here's the song Fallen Stars. <laughs>
Now, as this is the first show, we have to explain some things. And one of the things we've got to do is explain the comment section below. If you go to the comment section, you will find not only our website, but all the links that we may mention during the show um, that we go along, they'll all be listed there. Now, if you can't see them, then you need to click on the show more um, on the comment section, and that should open up everything. As well as that, we put in a timelining. So if you want to know just where the music is, or you want to see just the travel show, then you can click uh, on the timeline there. You can see what time it is, click on the video, and go straight to it. So that's what we're trying to do in the comment section, and each show will have its own little individual timeline. Well, now it's time for Una to introduce her first favorite song. And I'm sure she's going to give you a little bit of background information as to why it's one of her favorite songs. For my very first favorite song, it has to be this song. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to introduce Bruce Springsteen and the song Born to Run. I saw Bruce as a teenager at Slane Castle and he made a huge impact on me. It was the power, the might of the E Street Band and the fact that he kept going for a whole three hours. While I loved every song, it was Born to Run that got everybody up off their feet dancing and going wild. So I hope you get the goosebumps and you feel the adrenaline rise as this YouTube video should give you a great idea of what this song and band mean to me. To see the video, go to this link and don't forget to come back. Now I guess Tony's going to introduce to you his first favourite song. I'd advise you to go and water the plants. Well, it's the first show and it's time for my very first favourite song. And uh, I am Denard because you could be honestly with you take any of the 12 that we put in. But I thought this song I would put in as my first choice. And the song is a song called Music by John Miles. Now, John Miles had a hit in this in the mid 70s and uh, everybody thought, wow, fantastic. He's going to have a great career. And really, again, like a lot of the people I like, he's, his first hit was the big hit and then he went quiet. Now, the truth of the matter is he's been busy throughout his uh, time in music. He's been something to do with Tina Turner. I think musical producer for Tina Turner, various other things. But he still goes around. Now, in the UK, sadly, he sort of disappeared, which is part and parcel of, I guess, what happens sometimes to people. But I remember him. And I remember him especially when I found this video on YouTube. And it's a show that was done, I guess it was a public broadcast type company in Belgium that decided to do this and they did a version and I was just looking for a version to show you of the song and uh, I came across this and uh, this YouTube went wow now that's how it should have been and how good is that so that's the YouTube link we're going to show you and it is well worth you taking the time if you know the song and thought oh, I'm not sure have a listen to this because I think you'll be impressed by this. Now, John does appear in this and performs in this, so uh, he's still going strong and doing his bits and pieces. And I wish him well. I guess he's another one of the stalwarts of the music industry who's been working in the background, doesn't get the credit he deserves. And uh, I wish him all the very best, and I hope that you go and have a listen to this song and have the chills and the tingles go down the spine like I did when I heard it. Now, for me... Why is it so special? I guess it's because it's got a bit more of a classical feel because it did change quite a bit and that maybe is a little indication of what I'm like. But I love the way he changes pace and the crescendo to the end. It's a wonderful song. Please go and take the time to have a listen to it. And to do that, you go up here, follow the link, and then, of course, don't forget to come back. Now, we're very conscious that we may be new to you so therefore you don't know much about us. So we thought it'd be time to do a little blog, a piece. Now in this show, Una will do hers, and in two weeks' time, I'll give you a little bit about me. So this is a little blog from Una, and we thought we'd keep it light-hearted, and we'd just do it about how we got into singing and various routes that we've taken to end up where we are today. So I uh, hope you enjoy the blog. It's not been edited, it is from the heart. And we thought that's the best way to do it because that's the way we're going to do the shows and the way we're going to do this. So hope you enjoy it. And here's Una's little blog about how she got into singing. How did I start singing? Well, or who was the first thing or people I ever sang to? The first, 
My first audience, if I'm totally honest, was at home on the farm singing to the cattle. I'd be leaning against the gate. The gate would have been higher than me when I was a wee slip of a girl. And I used to sing to the cattle. It was very nice. <laughs> and I had no complaints, which was even better. And then I suppose it moved on from there. My family, my mum and dad, were quite religious. And so we went to church a lot. And I joined uh, a couple of choirs. And, you know, it took me a while to get used to singing in front of people. But I overcame that and got there in the end. And it was a wonderful way to get experience because it was, there weren't many, there was no folk clubs or anything, or not many in Ireland where I came from. There would have been a few in Dublin and that, but uh, where, I, where I was in rural Ireland, you know, you sang in the church, you sang at all the family weddings, which I did down through the years. And um, that's how it started for me. And then there was another friend of the family from Dublin, you know, from the big smoke, because we're just culchies. That's what we're known as if you come from the countryside in Ireland. So he said, um, you're not a bad wee singer, you know. Um, I've got a friend and she's a very good teacher in Dublin. And she was, she's one of the best teachers in Ireland at the time. I didn't realise that she was wonderful and very warm and had a great feeling and empathy for music. And she was always about, you know, trying to get that across. She was wonderful. So through that, I was doing that for a year or two or three. And then there was, again, that friend of the family said, uh, why don't you apply and get a, try and, you know, go for uh, to become a... Bunratty Castle singer. So I said, okay. So off we trotted down to, over to County Clare in the west coast of Ireland, did a few auditions and uh, as luck had had it, I got in and became a principal singer there for a few years and that was wonderful. That, um, in the process of time, brought me to America. And uh, again, for a wee culture girl from the middle of nowhere, that was fantastic. That just, just blew my socks off. I'll never forget walking around New York for the first time. And then I came back from that. And then another time, we used to get a lot of celebrities and famous people and that coming in to the banquets. And uh, uh, by hook or by crook, uh, this uh, company, this big beer company, wanted me to go over. And uh, so I got a, a letter through the post. I didn't think I would because, you know, we used to meet a lot of people and, you know, you'd, you'd never hear from anyone. And But this gentleman and his wife, they got back in contact with me and everything was signed and contracted. And I went, would you believe I was over there working on <laughs> some, I miss Danny boy for no other reason than I've got pale skin and gingery hair, right? And the Yanks loved that and I loved it even more. And I got around all the states of America. That really was something else. That was one of the big, the big, big moments of my life, I suppose. And then I came back again and I carried on working in, Bunratty Castle in County Clare. And again, between the jigs and the reels, um, tall, dark, handsome guy was in one night, otherwise known as the big bird, as I call him now, Mr. Tony Dean. And uh, I suppose uh, biked me off my feet and off I, one of us had to move. He did try to get a job in Ireland, uh, but you know what it's like, you know, jobs for the boys and that, and his, um, he doesn't look Irish at all, trust me, as you've seen yourself. So. Uh, I suppose I drew the short straw <laughs> and I moved over here to England. And then I'm thinking, holy God, what am I going to do now? You know, flip, what am I going to do now? It's like leaving the army. What do you do now? You know, uh, and there's no money and there's no nothing else. You know, flip. So I started going around to all these um, open mics, trying to join a band and what have you. And then I met this uh, lovely Irish guy who um, was a DJ in the East Midlands of England. And he said, um, Oh, you know, how are you? Would you like to come along and do a 45 minute set at our Easter show at Easter weekend at a, at a festival he had up there? And I said, yeah, OK. You know, because you don't say no to anything. And then I says to Big Bird, I says, right, get your guitar out, Sonny. <laughs> we got it there and we got to do this. So uh, in fairness, Tony's very, he's very fast there now, unlike myself, takes me a bit longer. And uh, off we tottered along and, uh, well, the Irish DJ obviously liked it because I couldn't believe it because then he asked us back for the Christmas uh, Irish weekend and I couldn't believe it. And he says, now I want you to do two sets and no bother to you, off you go. And I was, okay. And so um, then we got a, a show together, you know, two sets, 45 minutes. And then Tony being the businessman, because let's face it, I can barely add. He said, well, right. 
So, but that, that went down well and it worked and we we're both able to talk a bit and have the crack. And I like talking to people, you know, I love having the crack anywhere I can at all. And uh, so then after that, uh, we decided, right, should we give a go at this gigging business? So then we were kind of doing the gigs up and down the country everywhere and that was great. And then one night, um, I do like a bottle of nice wine and a nice bit of cheese. And uh, we wrote her out for a song, which is called Galway City. And I guess we've been writing songs like since and traveling up and down the countryside. It's been wonderful. So here we are. Who'd have guessed? <laughs> well, the shows are going to be every two weeks on a Tuesday at 8 p.m. So therefore, you should know in two weeks time to mark it down in your diary. And the intention is to do 12 shows in full. So hopefully you'll you gird your loins and you'll make it all the way to the end. This is our first original acoustic music song. Before we show it to you, we must give a huge big thank you to Visual Radio Arts. Thank you, PM. They did a great job helping, and more importantly, they gave us cakes and coffee. And in fact, we love them so much, there's a link below to their Facebook page. So here's the song, Absent Friends, about those we've lost along the road of life. The lyrics say it all. Well, good friends they come And good friends they go Never knowing which way The tide will flow in case you're asking Lost a long way Didn't really mean to It's just the price I've paid Standing on the shoreline Watching the tide slip away Just waiting I've paid and the wine flows like water at the end of the day it's hard to keep them ghosts at bay when it comes to judgment time
Now, as this is the very first show, we should say that we do have a website where we've been putting up a lot of our new songs. All the music that you hear on the shows, not only this show, but the 12 shows, will all be available from our website for you to download. And we've also included a song called Modern Life that you can get for absolutely free. All you have to do is give us your email address to get that. So uh, it is well worth your time to go to our web address. And uh, that web address is www.tonyanduna.net. And if you have a look, it's the top link in our comments uh, section below. Now, also on our website, uh, we're going to try and put up some of our cover songs, which we can't put up on YouTube because of copyright laws. Now, they may get taken down, and I may be talking rubbish as I say this, uh, because it is show one and things may change, but hopefully we'll be able to do that. So if you see a little or a little, you'll get an idea of what's going on. And just for a little fun, in each show we're going to be doing a little travelogue show. We live in a great little county called Dorset in the UK. And it'd be a shame for us not to show it to you and the other local counties. Now we're going to take it in turn to present the travelogues. The first one is Tony, off on his travels. Rumour has it that he's in the smallest city in the UK. If I was you, I'd go and water the plants. Now, I know it's not a policy of ours, but it seems to be we're following religion around. Uh, down in Dorset, there's a number of places we've been going to which all have cathedrals. And this place is no different. This has a cathedral as well. And uh, this is in the city of Wells. And the reason it's called Wells is actually somewhere behind us here, there are actually some wells that spring from the ground. So hence the name Wells. They weren't thinking very much when they came up with the name, but hey, uh, they built a beautiful city. So we're going to show you around it and let you have a look at it. And would you believe it? We arrived on a day when the market was in town. I absolutely love those boots. It was even that good that I decided to go for a walk around to see if there's anything to buy. Sadly, after half an hour, there was nothing for me. However, Una found eggs, cheese, crackers, and a sauce. There was also a pile of hats, not Una style, except for these last couple here. Well, we've been a bit lucky today because the market's been on in town. And that's meant we've been able to buy some cheese and biscuits for later on tonight for our supper. So Una's delighted with that. We've had a good walk round as well. And uh, Wells is looking particularly good because it's spring. A lot of the trees are in bloom. So it's been a nice day out for us to have a look around. But we haven't finished. We're going to do a bit more. So we'll see you later. You know, in the north of England, we spent a lot of time building huge mills for industry. Whereas it looks down here, in the south as though they built these huge cathedrals for religion. I'll let you decide which ones I prefer. There is one question I always wanted to ask. Who's gonna clean the windows? It ain't gonna be me. Well, you must think we're blessed with sunny days here, but it's not. We choose the days to come out when it's sunny. So please don't think everywhere we go is as sunny as this, but today it's a sunny day. Well, I found one of the wells and here it is. There's a big stone block right at the start of the market square. So there you go, one of the wells in Wells. Now, one of the things we like is the uh, palace, which is surrounded by a moat, and it gives you a wonderful walk around. 
and uh, is literally 20 yards from the main town centre. Now, this rope, uh, if you're wondering what it's doing, it's not hanging out the window. The idea is that the swans are trained, trained to pull the rope, to ring the bell, to open the window, to get some food. You know, sometimes the devil makes work for idle hands. Jesus, that's a big swan. Well, I must admit, every time I come to Wells, everybody tells me that there's a kingfisher that goes up and down the rivers on the far side. And once again, I had a look today, and once again, I have not seen the kingfisher. So although it's been a good day, I'm kingfisherless. And this is the area the kingfisher's supposed to live in. And I spent many a happy time on those benches looking for hours and hours. Oh look, a headless swan. Come on, no, 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 you're going the wrong way. This, no, don't, don't, no, don't walk away. Could, will you stop walking away? Stop it, no. I think you can tell who the boss is around here. Feel like David Bailey now. Now these are the mayflies and they dance around on the moat dipping into the water, it looks like rain, but there's no trout to feed on them, so they can happily do this all day long. And for somebody from Manchester, trust me, this is very different. Oh, here he comes, the Australian swan surfing in. Here comes old man Hobnob. Now there is a lovely walk, I'm told, because I've never been on it. Uh, the reason I've never been on it is I look at this view and I just generally give up because the view around it is stunning. Why walk that far? And I'm no expert on trees. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they grow upwards or sideways and they're different coloured green. But the views around here are really stunning. And again, I'm not too far away from the kingfisher spot. Now, there's a lot of independent shops here. Um, you don't find many of the retail or traditional retail shops on the high street. So uh, you can go and do your heart shopping to your heart's content. And when it's raining, it is a very good place to come. So Wells is nice on even on a wet day because you will find plenty of opportunity to go into the shops and uh, do your shopping. And as well as the general bric-a-brac stores and cafes and everything, there's actually a bit of culture here as well. And you will find me in the micro pub or in a real hale house. Both highly recommended. But of course, I'm not always in the ale house because I might be driving. And if I'm in driving, you'll find me here in Coffee One. And this is one of my favorite shops. Anybody over the age of 60 will love it in there. Of course, I'm under 60, so it wouldn't be me. And how about a bit of culture? Including one of myself.
Now, there's a lot of information you can find out about Wales if you go onto the tourist board information for Somerset. I would suggest it's probably in the top 10 places to come in Somerset. So if you do need to find out any more information, our good old friends, the tourist information, will do it for you. Now this is a wonderful part of the city and it's just to the side of the cathedral. You've got to find it. But if you find it, you'll be rewarded because this street was made for the vicars. And actually at the far end there, it is about three meters narrower than where we're filming. So it gives it the feel of distance, even though it's a little bit shorter than you think. Now away you go with your reading and we'll give you a test at the end. north of England, this would be called a two up, two down, with posh chimneys. And all the chimneys look very stunning, except for one which uh, looks as though it needs a bit of repair. But uh, as chimneys go, this is going so. Of course, if you've seen this in films, it's probably true, because it is used an awful lot. Now, this place I love, because this is where we want to do a gig. Why? Because the windows you can't get out of, and the door is six inches thick and lockable. Now this is a bit sad really, because they put a lock on it. And I rather think when they did it originally, there was no lock. So there you go, a sign of the times. I have to say around here, the amount of architecture to look at, if you were interested in it, is stunning. Um, even some Neanderthal like me, I find it very interesting. Although I thought this little place a bit different, the little theatre. Now this building, as I came past through that window up there, there was somebody playing the flute and it was beautiful to hear. Unfortunately, I didn't record it, so sorry. And there you go, modern houses as well as the old. And this is just to show you, on a good day, how beautiful Wells can be. On a side note, as ever, Una met somebody local and they were talking about the car parking because car parking is a problem in Wells. And uh, the person's just moved into Wells and has just been told that there's a two year waiting list, even though you live in Wells, to actually get a car parking permit. So if you do want to come here to live, I suggest you le learn to ride a unicycle. And it just shows you how good Wells is. This is the view as you go into the toilet. Now, one of the best places to go and have a coffee is actually in the palace itself. You could go into the palace for £8.50, or you could go in and spend your £8.50 on a coffee and a cake. I know which one I'd do. And of course, you can watch them playing croquet on the lawn. Nothing could be more English than this. Although having said that, if you were carrying around a lump of wood like that in Manchester, 
I rather think you'd be arrested. And of course, if you recognise this, you may recognise this. It's been used in TV programmes and films for many years because it's so, uh, I don't know what I want to say, medieval uh, in nature. So a lot of film companies come here and film. And we know that because Una found out Poldark was filmed here as well. Uh, in fact, it gets a little bit worrying how much she knows about the filming of Poldark. It's a good job there's only one more series to go. You know, this looks good. But I wouldn't like to drive it on a rainy day. Well, the farmer's out in his tractor, which I can hear in the background now. Probably mowing the lawns for the croquet later on. That's how efficient they are in wells. But I uh, hope you enjoyed Wells. If you get the chance to come along, it is worth a, a little trip out. Uh, but then that's why we do these little touristy things. So you probably guessed it's worthwhile coming down. Um, Nightlife-wise, night there's not much going on. Nightlife-wise? <laughs> Sorry. Nightlife, there isn't any really again. And at the risk of sounding pedantic, um, you're better going to Weymouth and Bournemouth. Although having said that, we don't go to Weymouth or Bournemouth either. So we could be telling you an absolute fib there. But it is a nice place to have a walk round over the evening. Uh, what has surprised me has been the amount of music I've heard. Uh, there was some trombone playing that I heard. There's been a flute playing. So there's actually been quite a bit of music around. There's a couple of buskers in town. We're doing a little bit of busking. So who knows? We may even, if times get hard and we lose friends and we're desperate, we may end up here in Wells playing on the streets. They were a lot smaller in the olden days. As you can hear, you might be able to hear, there's a helicopter somewhere. So they're coming to collect me. My time is up in Wells. So uh, I better get myself off to the landing pad and fly back home. I wish. Now we come to the final song of ours and what we're gonna call this normally is the cover song. Although in truth, this is a traditional song. And normally what happens in the cover song section is you'll see me going, oh, go and have a look over here. And there's us walking on a beach somewhere while we perform it live, but we cannot show you us actually doing so because of YouTube copyright laws, quite rightly so. But in this case, uh, we thought we'd start off with one where we can actually show you us performing live uh, so you can see what it's like. And the reason we can do that is because it's a traditional song called House of the Rising Sun. Now, some of you will know it as a band called The Animals covered it, but this is slightly different from The Animals version. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this. And as I say, you can actually go and see it all now. And if on the cover versions that we do in the future, you decide you want to see us perform it live, then uh, it is very worthwhile you going to our web page and having a look around there because chances are you might find it there. a house in New Orleans It's called a rising sun And it's been the root of many a poor boy And long and no She sewed my new blue jeans And my daddy was, he was a gambling man 
way down in New Orleans. Now the only thing gambler needs is a suitcase and a trunk. When he's on the drink, oh, mother, please tell your children. Not to do, don't do what I've done. Spend my life in sin and misery. In the house of the right. I've got one foot on the platform. I've got another one on the train. I'm going back to New Orleans to where. That ball and chain. Well, there we go. That's the end of the first show. Now, I know it's not perfectly formed in any way, shape or form. Uh, I know I'm spending hours doing the audio and the video and it may not be perfect. And there may be little bits where it looks a bit spooky, where the pictures go, woo. And that's because I, I'm using a thing called a warp stabiliser. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Captain Kirk. I am using a warp stabiliser to correct my pictures. But hey, you know what? We're not the BBC, so we're doing the best that we can. So please forgive us if the audio goes a bit loud and quiet in places mm. and a bit muffled. And da -da -da. We are trying to do our best. And with that, we'd like you to also try and pass this on to as many people as you can via Facebook. Let them know there's these two idiots in Shaftesbury having a go at doing this. Um, and they may enjoy the music as well or the travel logs and whatever it is they enjoy. We'd be very grateful if you took the time to do that. We would, would appreciate that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. And finally, um, I would say that within the show, we put a number of things about links and, and the comment section, show more and everything else. So we really have tried to do belt and braces with it. So please have a look at those. If you do get confused, they may help you out. And copyright law, I've even done a short version and a long version for you, should you be so interested in copyright. Yeah, yeah, I've gone to sleep or I'm on sleep now. Uh, anyway, you can go and do that. So, I think that's everything I've covered. Have I forgotten anything? No, you haven't. You're ever so eloquent. You could talk for England. Right. Do you want to say anything for Ireland, then? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we haven't said hello to mummies and daddies, have oh, we? No, oh. we <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello, mother. <laughs> um, yes, hello, mummy and dad who are up there, not, not down here. But anyway, um, we will say... See you somewhere down the road. Until the next time, which is in Tuesday, in two weeks' time at 8 p.m. Don't forget, put it in your diaries. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.